What's up guys, welcome to another video and I just wanted to touch base with you guys real quick. We're starting to see a lot of changes in YouTube and uh, it's starting to come out as people, they're just not uploading as much content or not uploading content at all. And I think these are good changes and it puts the, the power back into the hands of the small guys, you know, the real hobbyists, the people that are really passionate about what they're talking about. Uh, it, it's, it's allowing them to have more of a, an audience on this platform. And I think that's a good thing. I think that's a great thing. Um, and, you know, people are talking about COPPA. And, you know, real quick, here's my analytics right here. It looks like most of the people that watch my videos are in their mid to late 20s to, to mid to late 60s. So I, think, I guess I'm okay. Uh, you know, if not, whatever, I get demonetized. I don't care. Because guess what? I don't do this for the money. The rewards that I get from YouTube, it's its meeting new people, making new relationships, you know, meeting new content creators, finding out about new video games and products that I otherwise wouldn't know anything about. Those are the rewards that I get from YouTube. You know, all these people that are focused on the monetary, the money piece, their channels are starting to burn and they're starting to make mistakes and people are starting to catch on to it. And, you know, that's what's going on. That's the main thing that's changing YouTube, not the COPPA. That's, that's what's changing YouTube. You know, people that are just doing this for money, and, you know, I, 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 I hate to break it to you guys, to any bigger content creators, if you're listening to this, you know, you guys are not a major television network, you know, so why would, you know, and there's, you know, I like Cheers as a kid, Norman and Clifford, right? I didn't see Norman and Clifford after I watched Cheers, you know, talking about PayPal links down below and, you know, support their Patreon. I didn't see that. So why would I donate money to a grown man that makes hobby videos about video games? Why would I do that? That's crazy. I'm a working middle class American. Why would I donate money to that? And when they feel entitled, oh God, that's the worst. Um, you know, I'm just, I'm against the e-bagging. And, you know, if you have like a, a legit service that you're giving people, like Mad Little Pixel, I think he's a great YouTuber and I don't know if he has a Patreon or not, but, you know, I think if he got money from that, he would actually use it for the products and do the teardowns and the, do the compatibility stuff with the flashcards and everything. You know, I, I see value in that because it shows me where I should spend money or if I shouldn't spend money on a certain product. So I could see donating to something like that. You know, for those of you that are totally against Patreon, you know, that's just my opinion. But, I'll, you know, the, these e-bagging, e-baggers and the scams and the manipulation, I'm totally against that. And it makes my hobby look bad. So, you know, I'm, I'm with you guys, man. You guys that are against these e-baggers, I'm with you on that, man. You know, I don't, I'm not a big fan of Patreon. And, and I think Patreon gives these bigger YouTubers a sense of entitlement. Entitlement to get money from their audience. And for those of you that, that support these bigger YouTubers on Patreon... You know, they don't, they don't respect you. All they think about is money. You know, like I said, somebody like Mad Little Pixel, I think that he, he would respect, you know, people that donated to him. But, you know, some of these bigger YouTubers, you know, I think that they just look at us like we're just money to them, dollar signs. And uh, it all started from them making hobby videos about something they were passionate about. And it turned into them looking at just the monetary piece. And that's really sad. It's really sick. But, you know, people are starting to get hip to it. People are catching on to it. You know, I'm going to keep speaking out about it because I want to see this platform change for the good. You know, we're starting to see it change for the good. You know, this little community is really starting to make some dramatic changes in people's channels, and it's for the good. It's it's making these bigger creators accountable for what they're doing, you know, for the scams, for the manipulation, for the e-begging. It's making them being held accountable. And you can see it in certain YouTubers. You know, I'm not going to give you guys any examples, but you got, you know what I'm talking about. You know, you're seeing them, you know, drop certain phrases in certain videos and, you know, because they feel guilty, you know, they feel guilty about what they were doing for so long and, you know, people, you know, getting hip to it, catching on to it. And it, I think it's a good thing. And the main thing is it's bringing us a sense of community. And that's what it's about for me, that sense of community. So anyways, guys, let's check out these games. So with these PS1 games, I, this is just games that I feel like are expensive that I own. Um, I wouldn't say any of these games are rare. I mean, they're rare to the fact that you probably can't go down the street to the store and get them, but you can get them online. So, I mean, all these games are available. Plus, you can download them. Emulators are awesome. Um, these are just ones that I think they're the most expensive in my collection. Anyway, Valkyrie Profile. That's the first one. Now, this is an Enix game, and I guess this was before Square and Enix got together uh, to make Square Enix. But, yeah, this is a, this is a great RPG. This is a good turn-based, timing-based RPG um, it's got really cool story. The characters are great. The, uh, the character sprites in this game are great. 
I really like the battle system in this game. And uh, I, I do believe the definitive version's actually on the PSP, you know, with the added cutscenes and everything. But yeah, Valkyrie Profile is a great, great RPG, you know, one that I've, I've loved for many years. And I'm glad I got it years ago because I think it goes for, you know, whatever it goes for now, 100 bucks or whatever. And you know, I tried to grab games that were in between the 80 and $100 range. Um, here we go, The Misadventures of Tron Bond. This is a great turn-based, uh, not turn-based, uh, sorry, action RPG uh, in the Mega Man Legends universe. Now, I will be honest, I have not played this game in many years, but um, at the, well, no, maybe I'd say maybe about a year, maybe many years, maybe about a year, two years, maybe, maybe about two years I played this game. Um, but yeah, you know, I always liked Misadventures of Trombon. You know, I was turned off by the cover art at first, but, you know, I was, I was fortunate to uh, actually grab this in my local flea market years ago. Um, but, you know, this does not have the Mega Man Legends 2 demo disc, I will say that. And, you know, for those of you that, you know, might go nuts about it not being complete, you know, it's just, uh, it's the case, the manual and the disc, not the Mega Man Legends 2 disc. I don't have that. I thought about buying it to complete the actual set, but nah, I'll just buy Mega Man Legends 2, which I don't own. But anyway, Misadventures of Trombon, great game. Too expensive though, download it. Ah, Suikoden, Sakoden. I don't know how you pronounce that, Suikoden, Suikoden, Sakoden 2. You know, this is a great turn-based, not, not action. This is a great turn-based RPG. You know, I, I like this game. I like the sequel. Um, not the sequel, the prequel. Uh, Sakoden 1. Sakoden 1's good. Sakoden 2's good. Sakoden 3's okay. I played that on the PS2. Uh, Sakoden 4 was... Uh, I don't... Yeah, it's been so many years since I played that game. I remember that one not being as good as the first few. And then Sakoden Five was uh was great with that story with the Queen and the Queen turning evil. Yeah, you know you know how that game starts if you've played it, but I don't want to ruin it for you guys. But yeah, Sakoden Five I always like. But yeah, Sakoden Two this is uh you know this is a great game and it is they say it's rare, but you can find it online. It's expensive. It's like what 160 bucks now, and I, I forget what I paid for this. It wasn't 160 dollars though. But anyway, there's Sakoden Two. And up next, up next, we have ah, two games. You know, I didn't know which one to pick, so I think they both go for around the same thing. Tales of Destiny and Tales of Destiny 2. Um, you know, Namco, or I guess Bandai Namco. I guess this is before Bandai got together with Namco. You know, I don't know. Both these games are great. Um, Tales of Destiny. Uh, Tales of Destiny 2, which is, I guess, the, the real title is Tales of Eternia. Um, you know, these are both action RPGs. You know, they're, uh, the sprites in this, both these games are good. Um, you can actually get Tales of Eternia on the PSP. It's a PAL release, and um, I, I would say that's the definitive uh, edition of Tales of Destiny 2 or Tales of Eternia, but there is a version on the PSP that has a, a glitch in it where you can't progress through the game. So you know, be aware of that and try to buy from a seller that's not selling the glitched one. Um, but, yeah, great games. Uh, you know, I recommend them. I recommend getting Tales of Eternia on the PSP, and it's, it probably cost you between like 30 and 50 or, you know, you don't want to spend the hundred or whatever that this game goes for either one of these games go for, but yeah, you could just download, you know, an emulator and, you know, play the ROMs that way. So anyway, Tales of Destiny one and two and up next we have, oh, LA machine guns. I'm just showing this real quick because I found this the other day at the flea market. Um, I actually had the PAL the, or the German, whatever uh, version of this game on the way. But here's the copy that I found that is complete. And, uh, you know, I always go to the flea market and I always find something good, God damn it. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, L.A. Machine Guns and Gunblade New York on the Wii. You know, two uh, pretty cool Lycon games in the arcade back in the day. And they're on a cheap budget uh, title on the Wii. And I'm glad they made that cheap budget title on the Wii. And I've heard people rip this game apart, but I like it. And I think this is a great game. It uses the pointer in the Wii, uh, you know, in great ways, you know, I think. But it's weird. Why, why, how did we get to the Wii? You know, I was talking about PlayStation 1. But anyway, Gunblade New York and LA Machine Guns on the Nintendo Wii.